Morning everybody, it's David Hurst here um, I'm, and I'm virtually outside the Old Low Light Heritage Centre down on the North Shields Fish Quay uh, because today I was supposed to be leading a bird walk with the Old Low Light, um, one of the regular monthly bird walks that we organise in which um, I take a group of folk along the riverside and we have a look to see what kind of birds we can see at this time of the year. Um, obviously, unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 close down, the Yellow Light Heritage Centre is closed at the moment and all of our women and all of our walks and talks are on hold at the moment. But anyway, I thought it might be quite nice if um, if you're stuck at home like I am, perhaps we could just have a virtual walk along the river and have a look at some of the birds that you might see at this time of the year. So. We're going to start at the old low light and we're just going to walk down past the new low light to the fish key um, and we're going to have a look in what we call the gut which is the area where the um, fishing vessels are moored up and where they unload their catches because there's usually scraps of fish and things around here this is a very popular place for a lot of the birds to come down to a lot of the birds to come down to and uh, there it's a um, swimming around in the reflections from one of the fishing boats I can see a male eider duck and in fact just scanning around the water of the gut I can see there's quite a few eider ducks here at the moment uh, they, seem, they seem to winter on the river Tyne the nearest nesting colony to North Shields is probably on Coquit Island and they also nest on the Farne Islands and um, on Lindisfarne as well but in the winter time they come down here and they spend quite a bit of time in the river and sometimes they come into the, the, the gut and they'll swim in and dive for food. Uh, quite often there's prawns to be had around the place and that's what they'll be diving for and feeding on. As well as uh, being quite a lot of the male birds, which are the, the, the black and white ones, there's also quite a few of the female birds here at this time of the year and they're quite a different plumage. But well, let's have a quick look at the male first of all. As you, as you can see, it's a very smart bird in, in the uh, breeding plumage. Lovely black and white feathering, huge great big bill and these are really big ducks. These are probably one of the largest ducks that we have. In fact they are the largest ducks that we have in Britain and um, some of them are almost uh, are bigger than some of the geese that we have uh, in this country. This one's been diving and it looks like it's caught a crab which it might have some difficulty swallowing. Um, you can also see that they're not just black and white on the back of its head There's a lovely lime green patch as well And if we could see the front of this bird it would probably be a, like a rosy pink color on the breast as well like a rosy pink color on the breast as well. So really smart birds and This time of the year they're also the males are also displaying to each other competing to try and attract uh, a female as a mate There's lots of activity going on the males are are um, scrapping with each other, chasing each other, they're rearing out of the water and they're making a very unduck like ooing noise, a bit like Frankie Howard. So you can hear the ooh, 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 cooing noise, coo, uh, coming from the eider ducks this time of the year. The female duck, as I said earlier on, is a much more cryptic colour. Uh, she's a very brown plumage, a very brown plumage. Very feisty birds, though. They will peck at the male birds and they'll chase gulls away as well so they're um they're pretty feisty birds but they're this brown color because they're the birds that do almost all of the incubation of the eggs so once they've made their nest um they will incubate the eggs right the way through hardly feeding or drinking during all of that period the male birds after they've um, mated will escort the females to the nest and probably stay with them for a few days but after that the females are on their own and uh, and uh, in this nest you can see that the females lined it with the famous eiderdown which she plucks from her breast feathers and that produces an amazingly warm insulating layer for the eggs to be reared in and for the chicks to um, hatch out oh look over there i've just caught some of a small brown uh, bird um, it's got orange legs um, very brown on top very white underneath and quite a pointed bill and it's just going around poking at anything it can find. Uh, this is a turnstone. They um, quite often come up here um, because there's usually scraps of food around the place and sometimes when the fishermen are drying out their nets there'll be bits of food in there and this one's actually working through one of the drying nets trying to pick out little bits of food that have been left behind. 
as their name turnstone suggests normally they would be out they would be out on the riverside feeding on the intertidal areas on the shoreline turning over stones rocks seaweed whatever looking for little insects underneath and uh, this one's um investigating some sea word, seaweed along the um along the also here in the gut and out on the river we'll see lots on the river we'll see lots of these birds this is a cormorant this is a young cormorant it's quite brown and it's just caught a fish and if we just walk a little bit further along the uh, the river fishkey beach we can look out over to the remains of lloyd's jetty and this is usually lined up with lots of cormorants uh, perched up and all those these look like quite black birds and actually they look quite prehistoric don't they sometimes but these are if you see them close up they're really very smart birds they've got a lovely greeny pur greeny purple plumage really rather beautiful in fact um they aren't very waterproof though and uh, because they spend a lot of time diving underwater and diving quite a long way underwater and diving quite fast they're not very buoyant they don't retain very much air in their feathers so when they come out of the water a good old swim around they need to dry out their feathers and that's why you'll quite often see these cormorants um, with their wings outstretched drying them out and they'll be shaking their heads shaking their wings to get the water off them oh look look just down there on the edge of the tide line there's a group of very small gray and white birds they're running running in and out of the waves um, almost as if they're clockwork toys these are these are sandaling uh, they're one of my favorite birds and uh, they come to the tyne in the winter time they've probably been breeding up in the high arctic they've probably been breeding in either arctic canada or possibly greenland and they come down here in the winter time um, because the climate is um, much more pleasant than it would be in arctic in the arctic at this time of the in the arctic at this time of the year and these birds just pick uh, on bits of food that they find washed up on the tide line and they run in and out of the water they're really comical to watch but of course for them it's really a matter of life and death to keep them going through the winter time uh here's all so you can maybe judge from that the size of the sanderling really quite a small bird really attractive to watch before too long these birds will be um uh, molting into their summer plumage and then they'll be migrating back up into the high arctic where they'll nest and we won't see them again probably until late summer early or late summer early autumn they'll be much missed they're great fun to watch. oh and here's a bird that's just landed on the rocks it's um rather a brown nondescript bird up above but it's got a very bright orange legs and this is a red shank and this is a bird that breeds up on the moorlands of this country but also probably some birds come over from the continent as well and they're um they're, they're they've got a very long a fairly long bill and they will wade around in the rock pools looking to find whatever they can and uh, they're, they're, they're um, quite difficult to see when they're out on the rocks they're very well camouflaged now a bird that isn't particularly well camouflaged is the oyster catcher those black and white birds with the pinky orange legs that you see in the long orange bill and here's one alongside a turnstone which is just feeding on the uh, on the shoreline oyster catchers will um, feed on quite a variety of different things although one thing they don't often feed on is oysters this one's picked up a periwinkle and it's going to try and put it onto a flat rock and then hammer it open to try and get the tasty flesh inside flying by now i can hear and see a quite a large brownish bird with a very long down curved bill uh, that'll be a curly and uh, here it is it's landed and uh, here it is it's landed on the black middens now and that's one of the largest wading birds one of the largest shorebirds that we'll see on the tyne at this time of the year and um, they have a very long bill which they can use for poking into all sorts of crevices and corners so all these birds will be feeding on slightly because of the way that their bills have evolved this court curly was just caught a crab a little shore crab and uh that'll probably be a bit of a challenge for the curly to, to swallow that and uh they'll be leaving us fairly soon because again these curlies will breed up on the uh, moorlands of the north pennines some world continent as well so this is very much a time of coming and going uh, here on the river 
lots of birds which have been with us for the winter with us for the winter will be heading away now to their breeding grounds and before long spring will be with us and we'll be getting lots of migrant birds coming so that'd be great to look out for and if we can't get out on the, on the next bird walk, bird walk then um, perhaps you'll join me for another virtual walk along the river um, so thanks for joining me today home stay safe and we'll see you soon